Welcome to Wiki Africa Hour, where Africa's Wikimedians talk to, learn from, and discuss with each other topics they choose. Each session is curated by African Wikimedians to expand Africa's open movement. Today's host is Ceslas Obanyaya. Hello, friends of the open movement. I'm delighted to welcome you all to episode 16 of Wiki Africa Hour titled Wiki Identity. I'm Cecilo Subunaya, your host. This episode explores how the Wikimedia projects are easily identified across the different platforms and media. Why are these identities and brands important? And why is it important that we can identify them as Wikimedia? But first, we should define what a brand or what identity is. Wiktionary defines a brand as a symbolic identity represented by a name and or a logo which indicates a certain product or the service to the public it further states that a brand is the public image or reputation and recognized typical style of an individual or group in a world that keeps evolving digitally, graphic and sound logos and other forms of brand identity have become an essential component that helps the public to identify a trusted source and deliver on its expectations. As new consumption platforms such as Alexa and Siri become commonplace, new ways identifying brands needs to be explored both for profit and non-profits alike must swim this tide of digital branding in order to own and retain their respective niches and spaces or risk going extinct. The Wikimedia Foundation's projects, Wikipedia, Wikicode, Wikidata, ETC, all have visual identities, logos, brand colors, fonts, and the whole embodiment of designs on their respective sites. Some of the identities have undergone modifications over the years. Now the movement is discussing the need for a sound logo, the first of its kind in the Wikimedia movement. Today we have invited experts from the Wikimedia ecosystem to help us understand the different brand identities being represented by various Wikimedia projects and how they have changed over time and what we can look forward to in the future. First, we have Erina Mukuta. Erina is a Wikimedian and co-founder of Wikimedia Community User Group Uganda. She lives in Uganda and has been part of several projects to increase content and knowledge sharing. She has worked with several communities in Uganda, example schools, organizations, and other Wikimedia chapters, etc. She is currently the Wikimedia Sound Logo Project Community Liaison. And then we have Zach McCune. Zach began editing Wikipedia in 2005 and attended his first Wikimedia event at the British Museum in 2011. As the director of brand at the Wikimedia Foundation, he leads a team of designers, creative leaders, and brand strategists that we call the Brand Studio, whose goal is to raise awareness and usage of Wikimedia projects around the world, expanding the global reach of free knowledge. Hello, Zach. We will be start, starting with you first uh, on the first panel. Great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm honored to be a part of Wiki Africa Hour, episode 16. Thank you so much, Zach. Uh, we have seen your beautiful stamps over the years at the various uh, Wikimanias. But who are you? What drives <laughs> you? That's a fair question. Um, well, who am I? My name is Zach. Um, I identify as a creative person, a person who loves to create visual objects, um, storytelling objects, um, 
sometimes take photographs, sometimes produce films. And indeed, yes, I, I enjoy making stamps. I have a few here that I made for uh, Wikimania in South Africa. This is for Wikimania in Sweden. Um, I also have a stamp I made for Berlin for the Wikimedia Summit there, um, as it always is there. Um, fundamentally, I believe that creativity can be done collectively, uh, not just individually. And that means that we are all more creative together. Um, that's brought me to really love the Wikimedia movement. Um, I've been working at the foundation now for a, a stunning, surprising seven years. And in that time, I've done all sorts of collective creative exercises from making uh, ads to explain what Wikipedia is in Nigeria, Iraq, India, Mexico, um, to creating identities for our events like Wikimania. Um, and now we are embarking on something totally new, really remarkable, which is explaining to the world who our movement is and what our free knowledge content is with no visual, right? And actually a, a very different kind of challenge indeed. We have to create a sound for marking our content instead of using the URL, a logo, or a name. It's, a, it's an exciting moment, and I'm incredibly grateful that Arena is leading this work. Wow, uh, thank you for showing us what these uh, stamps look like handy. And then, I mean, stamps, logos, designs. Wikimedia projects are being represented by various logos and designs um, so far. Zach, could you share with us how these logo representations for various Wikimedia projects were chosen in the past? Maybe how they've been modified too? Yes, I would love to do that. Okay, let me let me share some slides here to give you uh, a history of Wikimedia identities. Um, you know, it's a lot of joy to share these with you because I see my role as director of brand as stewarding wiki brands, um, but not creating them, right? Like they are created by the movement uh, and then they are stewarded by the brand studio. Let's take as an example, the Wikipedia brand. Um, as we heard in that definition, a brand is a logo and a name and the associated public image that's constructed by both of them. And the Wikipedia brand is now over 21 years old, but where did it come from? Um, what are these different parts? Well, let's start with the name, Wikipedia. Um, it's two different things fused together, wiki and pedia. Uh, the second part is probably the more familiar to people because it derives from encyclopedia, which is a, a Greek word for general education. And it came to be embodied in a series of objects like long sets of books or even CD-ROM editions of collective knowledge. Um, Wikipedia, of course, is a revolution on that type of format, offering general education online uh, across millions of entries. And it's something that we know people are using every day, all the time, and keeping it up to date with 350 edits a minute. It's just one of the most remarkable things happening in the digital world. So Wiki. Where does that come from? Uh, these four letters are now part of almost every movement brand we have. Um, but it actually comes from Hawaiian, um, of all places, and it means quick. It's something that if you travel to Hawaii, you will find on the buses in the Honolulu airport, wiki wiki, meaning very quick. And it was selected by Ward Cunningham, a, a, software, a software designer, to describe the software he was creating where people could quickly edit and change things collectively. It wasn't a way to publish things on the internet uh, one at a time, but to actually quickly be able to et edit and update it. So wiki software is where we derive the name Wikipedia. Um, so together, that's where we've come to as far as a name. But the logo, okay, the logo, this thing we sometimes call the puzzle globe, where did that come from? Well we had a contest the wikimedia movement had a contest back in 2003 
here are some of the entries for that contest. Um, and this contest was an open call. What should uh, the logo for this project be? Um, and there were over 150 responses from around the world. This was the winner. This was the winner here. And you can see the user who created this amazing tradition. Uh, it was a open call for submissions and then a vote, right? And this has been true to how the Wikimedia movement has been making uh, logos and coming up with project names since the beginning. But that wasn't the end. It actually evolved from that place on to be what we have today, actually single glyphs on each tile uh, and with a silver color. Um, and that is, again, further refined in today to be flatter, easier to shrink down in size. You know, we're always evolving our brands to make sure they work for where people are using them. So now we have this incredible brand that uh, appears uh, 30 million times a day. That's how many times that logo is served out to the world. And it's mentioned in 70 news articles across the world in different languages on different topics every day. It's just remarkable how much use that brand gets. And it's a credit to the fact that it was made by the movement. Now, if you were looking at that contest, you would see that there were three finishers number one, number two, number three. And each one of these finishers has actually ended up being an important part of our brand ecosystem. So number one, the Puzzle Globe, that's become the Wikipedia logo. Um, but number two has become the Wikimedia logo, the logo for our entire movement. Um, sometimes this is called the Roundel, um, and sometimes it's called the Wikimedia bug because it kind of looks like a bug. Other people see someone reading, or uh, people who enjoy cocktails see a martini glass shape. The third finisher has become the source for MediaWiki software. Um, so it's an amazing way in which these logos from 2003 continue to shape what we do today. Overall, uh, we have 13 plus major projects. Here's some of them um, that represent free knowledge projects that are part of the Wikimedia movement. And if you look at them, just like relax your eyes a little bit, try to figure out what's common about them, right? I think that's one of the most interesting things is that if you encounter any one of these parts of our movement, how would you know it's related? That's one thing that we're always talking about with volunteers is like, how would you know that you're part of a movement? That's uh, it's a big question we have. And what we've discovered is that there's a few things that are shared across the brands. First, they're all doing the same mission, making knowledge free all around the world. The second is that there's often, not exclusively, but often a color palette uh, that's sometimes called the Wikimedia color palette. Three colors, green, blue, red. And these actually derive out of the software. Um, a blue comes from our links in our projects. When you click on a link that works, it's blue. When you click on a link that doesn't work, it's red. Uh, and there used to be green links, but that's some deep history that you can find out about. Uh, and finally, open question to everyone. Think about it for a moment. What is the thing that is shared across all of our movement names? It's four letters. Everybody knows it. In fact, the public use it as a nickname for us all the time. It's Wiki. Uh, it's even used here in Wiki Africa Hour. Uh, so Wiki is something that we found that 92% of internet users associate with Wikipedia and the Wikimedia movement. It's something that we're continuing to expand and using. And I always love when it's used as the beginning of names. Um, and there's a few other brands that use it because this software is used across the world, including WikiLeaks and WikiHow and WikiBuy, but really the overwhelming majority of people think of us when they think of the word Wiki. I think that's uh, a place where I can leave it as we start to think about the next thing we're going to make from scratch, which is a sound logo. We have no sound logo now, but we need one. Let me leave it there. The rundown, seeing how you know the contest led to the very first uh, Wikipedia logo. User Paulus Magnus, you are a legend for coming up with that. 
and then I, I, I couldn't help but <laughs> find that it's uh, very humorous for people to think that the Wikimedia logo has some, you know, Martini content in there. Perhaps we would love to see the world through the eyes of such people. <laughs> Thank you so much, Zach. That's quite an interesting rundown. And um, we've, we, we, we've seen how perhaps the Wikipedia logo has changed over the years. Uh, Zach, two years ago, there was a move to change the brand name entirely, which uh, didn't go very well. Uh, I understand you were the lead on the project. Can you briefly talk to us uh, about you know what happened and perhaps the consequences? Yes, any. indeed. Okay. Yeah, of course. So yeah, two years ago we had a project um, where we examined the center name of our movement, Wikimedia, right? And I, I want to say that there's always work happening on our brands across the movement. Um, people are always updating the logo and the name that represents their user group, their chapter, an event they're working on. We know that these happen across the movement and they always have to happen in the same way, openly and collectively. So when we were examining if the movement name should change, if it should actually be centered on Wikipedia, which is better known than Wikimedia, we brought this suggestion, this proposal out to movement volunteers and we heard very strongly back, no, do not change this. Um, and the evolutions from that no, that, that clear answer, do not change this, uh, not only have stopped any work on that kind of a change uh, and pushing us to celebrate and adopt that we are going to continue to be the Wikimedia movement. That's what we're going to emphasize. And we're going to continue to emphasize uh, that roundel shape as something we want the world to recognize more. We actually want to promote that more so people recognize that and think, when I see that, I think of knowledge and I think of free knowledge. Um, but it's also changed how we approach some of these collective processes, right? We want to actually make sure that we're socializing the problem for a brand issue before we get to solutions. So we have a lot of time to discuss collectively across the movement a problem we're trying to solve before we jump to here's a solution. And that's the way in which for the Sound Logo project, you can see that you know our consultations on this began um, actually almost a year ago a little uh, about November, we started talking to people and saying, we're starting to realize that 27% of the internet is getting knowledge from a voice assistant and uh, Wikimedia is not really well attributed there. It's not credited well, right? What do you think we should do, right? And we started to have those discussions again, almost a year ago. Um, and some of the answers that came back have shaped exactly what we're doing now, which is having an open call for ideas for marking ourselves in audio environments. Um, so the way we see it is that work always has to happen openly, it has to happen collectively, and, and that's what we're trying to do right now with the Sound Logo project. Interesting. I can't help but appreciate the constant, which is being open and you know adding a bit fun around it by making it a contest. And that way, we also make sure that only the best of the best get to be selected. Thank you so much, Zach. Um, director of brand, that's quite a huge role, if you ask me. Uh, heading up the Wikimedia brand, it must be a fascinating but yet challenging task. How did you land in this role, Zach? It is the honor of my life to uh, work in this role. Um, my background is in sociology um, and digital marketing. So I actually studied creative communities online as a master's student at the University of Cambridge. And when I was there, I started to study a community of people who were sharing photographs online through their phones. Uh, it was a very small community when I started to interview people there, but as I continued my studies, that community exploded. You probably know it now. It's called Instagram. And so when I published my research, I actually had authored the first academic study of Instagram. Uh, and this led me to being um, 
called by a lot of marketing agencies who said, we want to know how our brand should show up on Instagram. Uh, we want to know how our brand should show up on, on social media platforms broadly. Uh, and so that academic work pulled me into a professional career five, six years in New York, where I was actually representing brands and helping them uh, think about the ways in which they should use social media. Um, but I had always been a Wikimedian. And so when I heard um, during that time that the Wikimedia Foundation was looking for someone to help expand uh, their own brand representation on social media and beyond, I uh, applied and I was incredibly lucky to be selected at the time for a very small role. Uh, it was called Global Audiences. I'm, I was managing how we would relate to global audiences where we didn't hear much or didn't do much or didn't know much. Um, and I knew that social media could help connect uh, Wikimedia to people in those places. Um, and so that was the beginning of my career at Wikimedia. And it has evolved to include this incredible team of, of professionals who I just am so honored to work with. They are designers, they are writers, they are strategists, and we see ourselves as offering brand and creative services uh, to the movement um, from you know, making Wikimania identities to crafting uh, different presentation templates and guides that we put on Meta for anyone to use. And of course, now convening this search for the sound logo you know, we see ourselves as the facilitators for this process. Um, it is really quite a role. I, I'm constantly surprised um, and, and honored to, to be in this challenge because there's so much to do. Um, it's way more than any one person or one team could do, which is why it has to be done collectively. You know, most brands manage themselves like very tight, very closed. You think about something like, say, Coca-Cola, they, they establish almost a brand police, a brand authority. This is the only color of red we use. This is the only font we use. This is the only logo. And everyone asks that authority kind of for permission to use it. We have the exact opposite model, right? Like everyone in this movement is a brand uh, ambassador. They are making brand materials. They're adapting it to their needs. And we see ourselves as a resource that can help those people, but we're not the control. We are a... Uh, a decentralized movement on branding. And so we offer a series of resources people can use, modify and extend and share back to MetaWiki in common so other people can use it too. Thank you for that uh, rundown. I, mean, I could particularly take out a very amazing statement you just made. Everyone in the movement is a brand ambassador one way or the other yes that's very very relatable owing to how we make sure that things that we use also go under the cc license which is also free and can, can be remixed from time to time thank you so much zach and then from from managing the global audience to managing the what brand studio which falls under uh, the tasks that you handle what is the brand studio? Could you explain the purpose? Yes. The brand studio um, is a part of the Wikimedia Foundation's communications department. And we focus on communications work that needs uh, creative development, which is often visual design, uh, copywriting. Um, it can include video creation. Video production is something we do. Um, but then we also have a set of people who think about our brand and, and research how our brand is showing up in the world and even where our brand might be uh, really strong, really weak, or under threat. Um, I'll, I'll say here that one of the things that our, our brand uh, staff recently did was looked at how popular Wikipedia is in Russia. Um, now, we all know there's so much happening that's incredibly sad in, in the Russian-Ukraine war. Um, this, this conflict that has erupted. And because of this conflict and, and reporting on this conflict, you know, we've actually received multiple threats um, by the Russian government to block the site's access to Russian internet users. Um, you know, when that kind of threat happens, there's a lot of parts of the Wikimedia movement that respond. And in the Wikimedia Foundation, our legal team are incredibly active in, in looking at that threat as well as the engineering teams who think about what would that block mean? How would people continue to access our servers? Um, on the brand side, we look at how is 
Wikipedia viewed? You know, how, how well established is it? Do people think of it as a Western service? Do they think of it as something made by Russian people for Russian people? Um, and what we found in doing some brand research was that actually the Wikipedia brand is possibly the most popular in, uh, in Russia. It's more popular in Russia basically than every other market we routinely measure, which is Germany, the UK, Nigeria, India, Mexico, Brazil. We do a number of diagnostics twice a year, and we found that the Russian internet user actually feels the most care about Wikipedia, and it's one of the reasons why we think uh, the government has hesitated. I knock on wood because I hope it continues, but we know that they've hesitated to block the site. It's actually because of the popularity, the belief in that site, uh, and that's because of how Wikimedia volunteers in Russia have built that brand, right? As I said, brand ambassadors, that site is so incredibly useful and popular and important to Russian internet users that it's not like uh, the foundation is is the kind of counterpoint. It's actually the, the meaning that was created by Wikimedians in Russia. So to come back to your question, you know, what we have here, we have nine staff members with specialties in design, writing, and brand strategy. Um, and we're a resource for the foundation and for the wider movement. A project I wish uh, I had, a, we can actually find it, I'll, I'll send the links. We just helped Wikimedia Algeria, also known as WikiDZ. Uh, they wanted to update their identity. Um, and so we took the identity they had, we found them a designer who is based in Algeria, and we did a series of uh, updates, examining possibilities, and then they selected one of the possibilities to use. So you may have seen it during Wikimania, they launched this new identity and it features the fennec, uh, an amazing fox. Just actually, it's a really cute animal. And it's always been a symbol of Algeria. And so they have factored it more into their identity now, um, kind of making it a little bit more minimal than it was before, but connecting back to the movement. Like, you know, you always want to say, how does it connect to the movement? Well, we've continued to emphasize Wiki, uh, that continues to be a critical part. And the typeface, Montserrat, uh, is something used across the movement. It's a free-to-use type. It's the type used in Wikimedia Foundation, in Wikimedia uh, South Africa, and Wikimedia Deutschland. WikiDZ adopted that typeface as well during that design level. Oh, yeah, good. See, we've got some folks here from WikiDZ. Hello, everyone. <laughs> good to see you. That's amazing. Um, learning that, I mean, aside being designers and uh, strategists, that research also falls within the scope of the work the brands to do, gets to do. And I must say, uh, Zach, it's ironic that Wikipedia has the level of popularity you guys discovered in somewhere like Russia. But that's an interesting um, detail to have. And uh, the last question for you, Zach, uh, it sounds like quite a team to assemble. Talk about designers, creative leaders, and brand strategists. And now I will add brand researchers. How are these people selected? What criteria must they meet to be able to join the brand studio? Yes. So um, when we hire, we post our job publicly. We make an open global call um, for staff to join, um, candidates to join the Wikimedia Foundation brand studio. And, you know, the skills we look at, basically, there's three qualities that are always being looked for. One is specialty in the job description, right? And that might be specialty in design. It might be specialty in brand strategy. It might be specialty in uh, copywriting to describe brands across international markets. So we always want that specialty. Right. But the second thing we want is for you to appreciate that this is a collective movement. It's an open movement. It's a participatory movement. And that means that it's not enough to just have a lot of commercial experience, which a lot of candidates come to us with. They say, I've managed brand for major commercial brands. And we say, OK, when have you worked collectively with groups of people? When have you done a project in the public? When have you not shared work back to a single client, but actually shared work back to lots of groups and said, what do you all collectively think about it? How can it be better? We always want to have that experience. 
Um, and then, of course, the third quality is if you have experience with Wikimedia itself, that's a huge perk. You know, we want to know that people have uh, been readers, users, uh, beneficiaries of Wikipedia. They're familiar with where we stand in the world. But even better, uh, if they've contributed as an editor, a photographer, uh, a volunteer to the Wikimedia movements, that's an amazing feature. So those are the things we always are looking for when we do a job search. Um, and I'll tell you, we do that same, we have that same approach to when we hire uh, contractors or agencies, because we're incredibly lucky to work with creative houses, production specialists around the world. You know, the staff we have cannot be experienced enough to make an authentic uh, message to the places we work. So when we do uh, an, an ad campaign and develop a video in Iraq, we need a specialist, somebody there who's either an individual or an agency that knows that market well, but again, always appreciates that we're not like other brands, right? Like they have to think of their work as happening openly and collectively where feedback comes from everybody to make it better. Nice. Of course, anybody who is uh, going to work within the open movement has to be open himself or herself. Yes, it's a very strong feature when it comes to selecting somebody who perhaps should be on a team such as the brand team. Thank you so much, uh, Zach McCune. You have provided quite um, an insight by responding to these questions. Uh, we are looking forward to perhaps someone having a question from the audience for you during the Q&A segment of the episode. Uh, we now move to the next panel with um, Irina Mukuta to tell us more about this Wikimedia Sound logo. Hello, Irina. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Please briefly introduce yourself, Irina. Hi, uh, so my name is uh, Irina Mukuta. I'm from Uganda. I'm a Wikimedian with the Wikimedia, user, Wikimedia Community User Group Uganda. Uh, within my community, I'm a project lead. I work with Wiki Education. But for today, I'm a Wikimedia Sound Logo li Community Liaison for Sub Saharan Africa. And I will be talking about the sand logo, what it is, how you can participate, where to go when you need help. Yeah, that's it about me. You know, uh, Irina, this project aimed at finding a unique um, sonic logo for Wikimedia Project. For the benefit of the audience, uh, please first explain what a sound logo is and do you have examples you can show us yeah um let me share my screen okay uh, yeah. are we able to see the screen okay so what is a sound logo a sound logo is a brief collection of sounds these are usually between one to four seconds and uh it's a new way for Wikimedia to identify itself or Wikimedia content to be identified in uh, other ways, you know, for example, in virtual voice assistants that are quite popular today, as Zach had mentioned, Siri, Alexa, Google Assistant, people are calling on to these assistants for information, you know, hi Siri, who is Nelson Mandela? And even if this content is picked from Wikipedia, it's not identified as such, it's read off the page, but the consumer may not know that this is content, this is Wikimedia content. So we're looking at a sound logo that can identify us in that world, in the virtual world. So that's pretty much what a sound logo is. You will be able to listen to it after I talk more about it. Yeah, the Wikimedia logo that we're talking about or we are hoping to develop should represent what our movement is all about. The, the sound logo should feel human, inspired, and warm, yeah? It should also have a global feel. It shouldn't be particular to a culture or to a language or a style. It should have a global feel. 
I know Zach mentioned how previously the visual logo was, the community was called upon, the whole global scene was called upon to submit, you know, and it submitted something that everyone could relate One to. One moment. And it submitted everything, it submitted something that everyone could relate to. It should also comprise of multiple layers, textures or sounds. So maybe if uh, I'll just make an example, if I'm if there's someone snapping their finger and someone is banging, yeah. So those are two layers of sounds. But of course, I'm not saying use that. But yeah, it should be have some layers, some textures to it. Um, the entry should be one to four seconds, as I mentioned. A sound logo should be one to four seconds, and it should be an original sound or CC by zero or public domain, yeah. Uh, if you want to participate in it, it helps to have some, there are many ways to capture and produce and combine sounds. Uh, what sound would bring a smile to your face when you hear it or when you read out or when something is read out from a voice assistant. For example, a sound that can represent connections forming, knowledge growing, question and answer. Um, I know for several of us, there's several sounds we listen to and you automatically think of danger. Like if it's a horror movie and they play that intense music and you think, oh no, run, they're going to kill you. <laughs> anyway, so sounds do trigger certain elements in us to, they prompt us to think in a certain direction. Yeah. And um, for this particular competition, the sound logo, the sound logo will have a selection criteria as you submit the sound logo. 50% uh, of the criteria will consider to what extent this sound logo represents the spirit of the Wikimedia movement. How closely does the sound logo communicate one of the creative prompts? To what extent does it feel human, inspired, smart and warm? Also, 25% of the criteria would be originality. To what extent does the sound logo feel original and unique? Or how much does it stand out compared to the other sound logos submitted? Then 25% potential for a strong brand recall. How easily do you feel you could recall that sound logo? You know, some of those songs that just stick in your head. Or, for example, uh, there, I think there are certain sound logos we've had and we'll be able to listen to some of these after this, that the moment you hear, you know, oh, that's that, like that sound, you associate it to something. How easily do you feel you'll be able to replicate, sing, hum, tap that sound logo? Yeah, and uh, there is a timeline for for this contest, the, the Wikimedia Sound Contest. Uh, it's, uh, it's a truly global and inclusive context, so it's going to take time. As uh, Zach had mentioned, the discussions did start last year, and uh, if you did attend Wikindaba, there were community discussions taking place. So submissions started on 13th September, and they will go up to mid-October. And as you send, there's a screening team that is going through these submissions, making sure you adhere to the criteria that were set. Yeah, is this submission one to four seconds? Does it represent? Is it spam? You know, so there's a screening team that's going through all the submissions, and then uh, after that is done, there will be review, whereby that same selection committee will take us from the then submissions at that point to the top 40, top 20, then top 10. It's this top 10 that we are then going to vote upon, almost like how the, the, visual, the visual logo contest happened. There was voting, it was inclusive. And this will be tentatively in November, but the dates will be communicated. There will be also a legal review. Due diligence will be done, checking of copyright, and there will be a winner announced early in 2023. There will be a prize, of course, and uh, the winner will receive 2,500 US dollars and a trip to record with massive music. Yeah. 
that's just a brief summary a brief summary of what the sound logo is and what the sound logo contest is thank you Irina but I refuse to agree that that was a brief summary that was the whole nine yards <laughs> <laughs> the, the African in me couldn't resist. <laughs> okay, I would like to let you know that you've, of course, um, gotten ahead of some questions we would have loved to ask. So, that being said, I would just uh, skip some of the questions you've by default answered. Uh, Irina, please, would like to know where. I mean, what brought about this Wikimedia Sound Logo concept? How did it come about? Okay, so the Wikimedia Sound Logo concept, as um, Zach had introduced it, uh, it's something that we know people are using voice now for for knowledge, for search, for <clears throat> for for audio searches, uh, people's homes are, are automated, you have Alexa running everything, and it's just a matter of voice. And uh, I think through this, then there were community discussions as what should happen. And the proposal was the sound logo. And then it was followed by a community discussion. And uh, it has then led us to this point where it then became a project. And uh, now this contest is running. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you for that uh, brief rundown. Though, yes, you're right, Zach had mentioned that earlier. And lastly, um, for you, Irina, once the winning sound logo is selected, how would the third parties navigate around the free license? Would they be required to use the sound logo under our open CC license requirements and fair use? Please explain these aspects in case we are getting on smart TV like Netflix and other smart devices anytime soon. Okay. Uh, so like any other CC licensed work, any reuser would have two choices. Either use the sound under the CC license and follow all of the attribution rules or use the sound with a license from the sound owner. That would be the foundation. This is the same way that the visual logos would work or visual logos already work. But it's also useful to separate copyright of the logo and trademark of the logo. Since the sound logo is being used as a trademark, so also the trademark law applies. Any user that wants to use the sound logos copyright only, you want to put it in a song or you want to put it in your presentation or something, you would be free to do so under the Creative Commons license. But if you want to use the sound to suggest an official connection to or a, or com a commercial endorsement, you would need direct permission from the foundation. Thank you. Thank you so much, so much. Um, Irina, for explaining that and then sharing more details about the Wikimedia sound logo and the contest. Uh, perhaps uh, I myself in, in particular, I'm looking forward to hearing what the Sonic logo would sound like when it's selected. And hopefully there will be a question uh, from the audience, but that being said, we now move to the Q&A segment we had pre-collected some community questions in advance so we'll just have uh, you and zach answer to the questions uh, zach the the first question is for you uh some of the opinion that the various wiki interfaces uh they look outdated and haven't evolved uh, with time. Uh, Zach, does this fall under your jurisdiction? And what do you have to say if it does? This 
falls under product um, jurisdiction within the communications, uh, uh, excuse me, within the Wikimedia Foundation's uh, structure. They actually lead the graphic interface work, um, but it is something that I care a lot about because our interface is one of the most important elements we have as a brand. It, it's not a logo or a name, but it communicates a sense of usability, uh, a sense of purpose, a sense of are we fast moving or slow moving? Are we useful? Are we easy for people to navigate and find what they need? Um, so it's something that the brand studio collaborates with the product design group on. Um, and, you know, this is a good time to, to call out a few things that I know are happening both within the product design group now and in movement uh, conversations. One, uh, there is a project called Desktop Refresh, which on desktop interfaces um, is actually exploring this very question. Should the interfaces um, change? Should they simplify? Should they become easier to use? There's a series of ideas out there from the product design group. and you can find them by searching desktop refresh on um, MetaWiki. The other thing that's happening is there's some discussion now about the vector, uh, the vector skin. Um, I think there's a request for comment going on right now. Um, so those are some places in which the discussions about how much we change the interface should happen. One last thing I'll add here is that to some internet users are perceived slowness, the, the fact that our interface doesn't change that often, is actually a sign of strength, continuity, and it is, has created more trust. Uh, so some of the research we've done has actually shown that by not consistently evolving, uh, like kind of at the pace of major tech companies like Amazon, Apple, Facebook, um, we've actually created some areas where there's a sense that our interface is even a beloved sign of trust, but that doesn't mean that change can't happen, right? You know, it's like, we know that if you look at a desktop view of a wiki site, the left column uh, or the right column, depending on the language you're reading in, has actually dozens of links that people are not using. So there's always room to improve while we keep things somewhat consistent. We always want to make sure we're testing. I recommend checking out the desktop refresh project on MetaWiki. You'll learn a little bit more about how product design is putting that forward. Thank you. Thank you so much for explaining further in details. And then the next question for you, Zach, a brand has to constantly evolve to remain relevant. How do you think a sound logo will add to the Wikimedia's already complex brand ecosystem? These are good questions. These are tough questions. Um, so our brand, a brand indicates a product or a service or a mission in the world. Um, the, the speed at which it changes is itself communicating kind of attitudes from that product service or mission driven organization. Wikimedia is kind of always moving at a slower pace because we're moving at a collective pace. Um, and that means that the decisions we make do not come from a single group. They come from a wide set of participants. Um, when we add the sound logo, we will be in totally new territory. So this will not be an update. It will be an expansion. Uh, and I actually think we're looking ahead over the next probably three to six years at a few areas where we need to expand. Um, one thing that is coming up in discussions now is about three-dimensional logos, um, which is to say logos you can actually move around. Um, you can rotate them. You can view them in three-dimensional environments uh, like Minecraft, Roblox, or other um, interactive things. People are starting to map spaces three-dimensionally to, to offer 3D files on commons. And so right now, the Wikimedia uh, movement brands only have a handful of things that are ready to look at in 3D. Somebody does have an amazing version of the Wikipedia puzzle globe. You can look at that in 3D. Um, but the other projects are still very flat. You have to look at them in two dimensions. So 3D logos, I think, will be something 
we'll start looking at next as a group. And that will be a really fun project again as we think about this collectively and probably evolve these things uh, openly through, through additional contests. That's interesting. Just uh, when I thought we don't have any more tricks <laughs> in our box, <laughs> we, we got lots of things. 3D logo. That's amazing. I can't wait. That's going to be mind blowing. Thank you for hinting us on this, Zach. We can't wait to see this uh, come to light. And uh, over to you, Irina. How has the sound logo contest been so far? How many entries? Uh, yeah, so it's surprisingly hard, has been quite good so far. We have had 699 submissions in just almost just the first week or so from 96 countries. Our web portal language submissions have 566 English, 51 Spanish, 27 French, 28 German, 8 Portuguese, 13 Arabic, 4 Indonesian, 2 Hindi. We have had 648 submissions. So, sorry, 648 submissions have been fully screened with 302 proceeding to go to the scoring phase. Yeah, that's how it's going. That's interesting. Please, where can people perhaps go to participate? How can they maybe upload their submissions? Okay, cool. Let me share my screen just to show you. Uh, so people can go to soundlogo.wikimedia.org, uh, click on the word submit, uh, fill in the details they just need to fill in and make their submission here. So it's almost like a one-step process, quite easy. We also have resources for people here. You can listen in to this masterclass to help you get going and understand what to do. You can read about the sound logo. So it's a one-stop area for anyone who wants to check it out. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Irina. It's mind-blowing knowing that what we could be hitting over a thousand entries. That it's, uh, that's going to be an, an amazing uh, going through all of them, screening to make sure that they are coming correct. Well done to the sound logo team. And uh, thank you, Zach and Irina, for attending to these um, community questions. And we would like to, of course, acknowledge the fact that we know that you've been waiting to find out the winners for this year's Wiki Loves Africa Home and Habitat competition. Uh, there is a video that will be played shortly about the shortlisted images. And please know that the final winners will be announced next week. quite an exhibition <laughs> a mini exhibition if i would say we look forward to of course having the winners announced beautiful images i must uh, say and we now move forward to 
giving the news update we have for this episode and with me to announce the news updates today is Afek Ben Shahed. Hello Afek. Hi, this is Thank you for agreeing to do this with me. First, Hello. the call for proposals and scholarships for 2022 Wiki Endeavor Conference is ongoing. The theme for this year's conference is Advancing Africa's Agenda in the Implementation of the 2030 Movement Strategy. Scholarship application closes on 23rd September. Why session proposals are welcome till 1st October. The Wikimedia Sound logo contest is still on until 20th October. Please participate. You meant to say 10th, Afek? Sorry? 10th October, right? Yeah, I said until 10th October. Okay, thank you. The Universal Code of Conduct Enforcement Guidelines Revisions Committee is requesting comments regarding the revised enforcement draft guidelines for the Universal Code of Conduct. This review period ends on October 8, 2022. The second EduWiki Sub-Saharan Regional Meeting comes up on 27th September, 2022 at 3 p.m. UTC. Register or submit a session. Wikimedia is once again participating in the winter edition of this year's Outreachy from December 2022 to March 2023. If you have some ideas for coding or non-coding, be it design, documentation, translation, outreach, or research projects, the deadline to submit projects on the Outreachy website is September 30th, 2022. Wikimedia Sweden has launched Help Desk for Content Partnerships, a service to support Wikimedians that want to work with partners to share content on the Wikimedia platforms. The idea is that anyone that wants support with a project sends an email to helpdesk at wikimedia.se. You can also send an email if you wish to support others. The Wiki Credibility Grants Initiative is pleased to announce that it is now accepting applications for individuals, groups, or organizations seeking funding support for the development of tools, projects, or initiatives that strengthen credibility and reliability of information within Wikimedia projects. More info and how to apply can be found on Wikicred meta page. Deadline is 21st October. You are invited to the monthly conversation hour of the Global Advocacy Public Policy Team happening on September 24 at 8 UTC and September 29 at uh, 5 p.m. UTC. The topic this month is um, anti-surveillance for meeting link go to public policy in MetaPage. And lastly, the draft leadership definition prepared by the Leadership Development Working Group is ready for community feedback please share your feedback on the leadership development working group talk page on meta or the feedback form or the movement strategy forum you can also directly email your feedback to leadership working group at wikimedia.org the feedback will be collected till october 6 2022 Thank you so much uh, once again, Afek, for doing this. Thank and you, you can view all the news updates in the newsroom section of the Wiki Africa Our Meta page. And also remember that the action links are also there in the newsroom. Our identity as movement is attached to the individual identities of the respective Wikimedia projects we all contribute to. More interestingly, our collective universal identity is about to have a sound. It's been very catchy listening to our guests explain how the Wikimedia sound logo would be selected and how the brand studio functions around the movement all towards having a befitting Wikimedia identity. It was a full-blown tutorial session indeed. 
on behalf of the wiki in africa team i say a big thank you to you Irina mukuta and to you zach mccune for finding time today in your very busy schedules to honor our invitation i also thank the audience uh, for showing up i remain your host Seslos Ogunnaya, and i wish you a happy weekend See you next time. I remember to subscribe to Wiki in Africa YouTube channel. Thank you.